Итак, добрый день, раз. So greetings, dear colleagues. I'm happy to greet you here. My name is Kirill Baravikov. I represent company Tensor. I'm a technical director of Tensor, and I make everything that's combined with databases of how databases work. Today, I will tell you about how we can manage optimize mass queries. So not one query uh, with change of it. No, how to make it with millions of queries. At first, Tensor is SPIS. SPIS is a complex system of um, management. It is a web application that allows full organization of business cycle of operations of practically every company, from storage, financing, into internal social networking, uh, messaging, uh, like messaging uh, or applications, uh, managing the engineers. We've managed to work with more than 100 of different projects, scalable, non-scalable. There are managed by, by more than 1,000 of developers who work and who operate and we need to operate and administrate the works of uh, developers so we're working actively with postgres and we've accumulated a basis of knowledge of how to prepare it we use it in production from 2008 and now we have uh, about 250 servers operating servers plus hosting with plus minus 400 ter terabyte of live data along with statistics, analytics, logs and everything that is not considered as working. So, first of all, SQL is a de declarative language. Everyone understand that we are speaking of uh, what we are willing to receive and uh, the system decides how it will make it, what are the indexes that will be used by the system, what is the order of uh, conjoinment of tables, everything, this database thinks that it knows better than you. So correspondingly some data management systems uh, accept these hints to configure it, but the basis configuration of Postgres does not understand this. But still, Postgres is every time ready to tell you how uh, did Postgres execute your query. I think everyone who sits here, sooner or later as the developer or uh, as the contact person to the developer, has asked himself or herself why did it took so long to execute it. There are four main grounds for it, main reasons. The first reason, the first headache, is the algorithmic ineffective query. When the developer says, I have a table here, I have common DB expression of 10,000 points plus 10,000 queries from other, and then I make uh, two joinders between them. 10,000 multiplied by 10,000, 100 millions, and my CPU is down. This is really a problem for us because uh, we cannot heal it by operative intrusions. It demands for rewriting of structures, of queries. One more typical pattern here can be like this. When the developer says the database is intelligent, we can make 10 joins, one to each other, and then you ask yourself, why did it happen to be as uh, I was propagating, as I was thinking? It happens like this because your uh, statistics, your actual statistics is in actual. The collector of statistics, the auto vacuum processor, cannot manage to take the last inserts or last changes in tables. That means that your query will be executed in, in the way not that was not planned by you, but that is planned by the basis incorrectly. The third moment is the apparate inaccuracy. It can be the typical situation when we've loaded a database and the CPU, and the, we were out of CPU, like the load from some company, new software, new functions. 
and this can limit your CPU. And these are the three main limitations, the resources of the CPU, the availability of this system, or the volume of memory, the cache memory, memory cache. And it's le loading probability. When you can make uh, tons of queries that will uh, uh, full your cache until the end. And the fourth is the blocking. It's uh, more actual for DML queries. Uh, and uh, general web applications don't have so much DML queries. And I think uh, we will use another conference to speak about DML. But still, we have a plan for the other queries. The plans can be different, of course. And it all depends on uh, who likes what plan. But uh, from, the auto, from the view of Postgres, the plan is a tree, is a text tree. Text tree of representation of how planner it will uh, execute your query. Every element is one operation. Extraction of data, scanning of index, bitmap, operation operations uh, of various operations. But execution of plan is just uh, the journey through the nodes. It could be parallel, it could be asynchronous, uh, and it all depends on your, of your version. To receive a plan of execution of uh, queries, you can use explain command. If you use it along with analyze buffers, it will expl it will execute your query and it will provide not only evaluation information of uh, containing the information of what server is thinking of uh, the procedure but it will also collect the real information that was uh, integrated uh, due to your query the quantity of uh, writings the quantity of data that was touched by the program uh, from the cache or from the disk and uh, this is a great solution, but still, it is great for only manual local debugging. But if your system is uh, under high load, that means that when you see that uh, some query is executed for a long time, you can waste 10 minutes and then, after 10 minutes of your communication, you see that the data, ba data set is altered. It's not the same data set that was uh, 10 minutes ago. How to receive the actual information from the fact that uh, was on the server when the problem occurred? So smart people have developed the module of auto-explain that is a standard part of standard set of uh, installation media for Postgres. You can uh, read uh, very great things in its documentation. So main functions is you tell to it the line of debugging and everything that is longer than the line, then the XXMS, uh, they are put into the log. Just beginning from a uh, border. Depending of what system you are using, you can uh, see that one second is bad or not so bad. Oh, you can also install 10 milliseconds, uh, the response time. How does it look in reality? In reality, in log, we have a great picture where we see the header line, then the body of the query, and if you look down, you see aggregate and the plan, the execution of the plan. What can we say? We say like a comrade Stalin that this plan is very great. It was is executed in less than 11 milliseconds. But to think about it, it's not so easy because uh, the picture is not so feasible, uh, is not so understandable. It is text. And in this text, uh, along with this text, you need to perform some operations in your mind. And in each node, you see the sum of resources for uh, uh, all nodes, including this node. 
So if you were if you are working with Petastatic Scan and if you want to calculate the pages, you need to find the correspondent nodes and calculate it in your mind. This is the first uh, problem, and the second problem is evaluation of time. The evaluation of time should be multiplied uh, by the quantity of cycles of execution in for the node. And your aim is to understand what is the weakest part in your query, and this is not trivial solution, uh, not trivial uh, question. But it, as it is already said in manual. The understanding of a plan is a feat and you need to have certain experience. So we work with thousand developers and uh, even if someone has an experience, this is one person out of 1000. It is re really problematic to share this kind of experience. So we've managed to think about it. We think that it is time, it is the highest time to have a great visualization for us to understand uh, uh, through this visualization what really happened. We started to think about it three to four years ago. We started to Google for this kind of information. We found some utilities for log analysis, but not for analysis of plans. So for analysis of plans, we found a website from one of the community active for people who are active in community. You can see this website on uh, the screen. You can feed the text plan into to the website and then you receive a chart. And in this chart, in this table, you can see everything that can be extracted out of the text. What is great in it? It's great that we can calculate the time of execution for every node. We can also see the statistic deviation, the deviations from statistic data of execution of the plan. Well, imagine the situation when you were expecting that you will have 1,000 queries, but then you receive back only one query out of the 1,000. That means that something is uh, broken in the statistics. Then separately, uh, the repetitions of the node are also calculated for us to trace them. And there is also a gorgeous thing like archive of the plan. You can archive the plan, make it public, and just pass it to your neighbor. Like Vasya, take a look at what happens in the, ser uh, in the server. But there are not only pros but cons in the server. Not the these are not the worst parts, but still the they were inappropriate for us. At first, it demands for a copy paste, and copy paste in. Uh, at our scale is a pain, it's a real pain. Secondly, we don't have the analysis of resources, so it calculates time but it doesn't calculate buffers. And the code is written on Perl, so that means that the development uh, is, is very rare. So once a year we can receive a minor patch. So and uh, only this week they made one fix uh, for a bug uh, in parallel queries because the, all the queries, uh, parallel queries were released for 9.6. But the thing that caused the most problems was the analysis in, of common table expression or init plan. What do I mean by this? If you take a look at a closer look at this plan, you can see that we are shown uh, that the overall time of the node is 6.4 milliseconds. It fully corresponds to it full time. So how come it looks like this node has taken the whole time, but it was not this node, one point four milliseconds was taken but six can and uh, from that one the data was read so we see that there is a bug because the city the inbuilt city 
was hasn't taken the function of city as Khan. So we looked at it, we saw that uh, we can't do anything about it, uh, and of course at this point uh, every developer is happy because this is an opportunity to write something yourself. That's what we did. We took uh, the core of the system, but GS, in fact, this is a very convenient technology as it, it uh, allows you to get MVP quickly. Uh, we built the interface on Twitter Bootstrap, and uh, to make it beautiful, we used the uh, D3GS library. If uh, you do not uh, work actively with the uh, front end, you can have a look at this library. It, it is beautiful. So it took us approximately two weeks to build the prototype. There was uh, no really complicated work there. So what did we do? We built our own parser plan. We tried to implement the correct, as far as we understood at that time, calculation of uh, CTS scan resources. So we deducted resources from CTE scans that uh, CTEs generated themselves. We added analysis of buffers uh, to see who ate the space of uh, the disk, and we also uh, added uh, some things for visualization, highlighting of syntaxes uh, to have everything more visible just for us. So we ended up with this beautiful picture. This is explained CBS plan, and we see all the records, number of cycles, and so on. And to the right, we see the buffers what was read from the memory, what was read from the disk, but in this way it is still rather bulky and uh, there is quite a lot of information here. Why showing all of it, since we have the important parts to the left and to the right, and we decided to have by default this kind of view. And this view, in fact, is the structural view of plan plane without uh, figures. And we called it template, because parameters may change, uh, filters may change depending on the input data, but the template itself, it is more or less the same in the majority of cases. To improve it yet more from the point of view of understanding what is happening, we decided uh, to put this sub chart pie chart uh, for time and uh, this pie chart shows that only quarter of time was taken by extracting of data and CT scan took three times more time these 12,000 12, records were extracted quickly and it took three times more time to read all of them this is a small remark actually meaning that not all CTEs are equally useful. Now, a bit more complicated picture. If you have a plan with, consisting of five to six elements, you can take them at one go with your eyes. But uh, if you have above 10, then you need to somehow quickly figure out what is taking the time. And here, by the pie chart, we can see quickly that more than half of the time was taken by consecutive scanning of the table. And uh, although we took only 57,000 records and uh, we filtered more than 3 million records on the way, so by the time lost at every node we can give the conclusion as to where we made a mistake for casting the way it is going to happen from the point of view of server and from the point of view of the most eff effective and optimal extraction of data. As we were inventing it ourselves, uh, of course, we encountered problems. And from the point of view of time, 
The rounding was about one millisecond. When we multiply one thousand one zero point zero zero one by one thousand, it means that uh, the time taken by rounding is uh, one millisecond already, and this error, this margin of rounding actually accumulates uh, with the, the increase of the number of cycles. So you need to take that into consideration. Another thing that uh, was a trap for us as well is a much more difficult and complex distribution of city resources than we thought it initially could be. So we thought that uh, we will just add CT scan on top of it and it will be all beautiful. But it turned out to be not as beautiful as we thought. If you have 20 CT scans, then between them resources can actually flow between them freely. So you, in reality, consume them to generate CT, but they are written in a different way for different CT scans, and you cannot uh, deduct one node from another one. To infer it, you can, to, to understand it, you can uh, take this simple algorithm and uh, here we took a table and read two records from it. For the first one and uh, the one with the offset by 100. It looks, the result looked uh, as follows. There are three highlighted points here. In one of CTS scans, uh, we see that uh, it consumed three pages, the other one two pages, and uh, number three, it took one more page. So it's three, two, and one, but it doesn't mean six. It means the same three pages that, that were consumed initially at the last during the last reading of the table, but they were read in two goes. So consuming resources in terms of plan, it is not a tree, it is a cyclic plan and uh, well, the resources are consumed at some, at some point and then they are distributed in, uh, well, somehow in a not evident way. So we came up with this scheme for implementation of the plan that we've shown on the previous slide. Here we took table expression C, that's what we call it, and we took two, two CT scans from it. Then they were uh, limited and upended at the end. This is a simple scheme. There is nothing really interested about, interesting about it uh, apart from its disrupting the idea of uh, the implementation of a plan in a format of a tree. But the system actually helps you to highlight uh, the points where resources are consumed mostly. So it is not necessary to look through the whole plan thoroughly. You can see the most important point at once. But this is, uh, again, a simple thing. And in reality, we actually see this kind of picture. It is much more elaborated. And uh, to help developers, what happens here, in fact, we first reduce the number of nodes that are displayed. We took away from the display the subplans that are generated, other plans, cities. Uh, we just put them under a node that uh, next to the node which is right under them. At some nodes uh, we put a red point for the developer to understand that something is filtered here, something is going on, not like you think it is. it should be going on. Uh, and uh, what are these elements? Well, it depends on the applica application problem of uh, the developer. Another thing, above every node, no, well, above some nodes where this, the number of cycles is more than one, 
We put the number of cycles, actually. You probably cannot see it clearly, but in the left part. You understand that it doesn't matter what is the number of cycles, but uh, this is a four-digit number. It means that uh, these are thousands of cycles and uh, they have an index to them. And it doesn't matter whether it's two or four thousands. And um, it needs attention. So it may be a good case, but it might be not. So it needs attention anyway. So at this point, we uh, well, we felt comfortable. Uh, yes, no, you know Kung Fu. Uh, we told uh, the developers that you can use these servers. But, and the number of our tasks, in fact, uh, it reduced because we didn't have to explain to the developers every time what they have to do. But there were other problems that were and tasks that were still left for us. For example, consolidation of logs. Say we have a system of servers, and if we launch the system at a number of servers, we get just tons of logs. There is one thing that uh, already does uh, consolidation of information, PG stat statements. This is a system view that uh, generates information for system queries, but it collects information only by queries. And we needed plans. So it is not always uh, that we can get uh, from the query what was really happening. Another thing is that Well, it does not group the information for you by schemes. Because there may be schemes uh, that are more or less similar. And uh, in this case, we can say that this query is more or less the same for all the schemes. But uh, query IDs f are different for different schemes. And uh, of course, uh, this is not actual information, this is an aggregate. So it calculated something and it can show it to you, but no facts. We do not, we cannot say by this information where this query was run, where, when and where it was run. We can only state that it was run and uh, this is how much it consumed for 10,000 of runs. And, uh, well, copy-paste is uh, a bad thing, but uh, when we understood the scale of the disaster, we, in fact, saw that copy-paste in this scale will cost more than using this system. And uh, we decided to structure it. So we came up with a collector. As the core of the service was taken 0GS, so we continued writing this system with this collector. It takes SSA key, then it puts a channel through to the observed Postgres server and, and launches tail there. And as a result, it gets mirror traffic, the things that are written and to mirror log at the server, the, uh, the ones that admins can uh, back up, drag or put to back rotate, we, we get it online. So write it once, uh, we saw that uh, we are getting it at once, we get all the information that is actually going to log. Collector also puts an additional s connection that uses PSQL. So it does not establish the connection every time. It saves the resources of the server. It puts it once and um, it sends queries uh, like, dear friend, uh, report your current status. What are the queries that uh, you currently have? Uh, what is blocked? And then we are looking at PG logs, uh, where is the lock, where is the interlock, uh, what are the 
blocked processes that are conflicting. And it all seems, seems good, but we missed one thing. We missed the elephant. And when we first launched this system, we had several dozens of servers, and it, it, we learned very qu quickly to write it into the database. And as a storage, of course, we used Postgres as well, and uh, we learned to do that very quickly. Uh, in Postgres, there is nothing quicker than copy for big amounts of data. So what are the figures that we ended up with? Over 100 servers, 50,000 queries per second, and that gave us 100 to 150 GBs of logs per day. Well, it's clear that we had to uh, very quickly introduce sectioning by days because in a pulling a table by several TBs, it, it was not a nice thing to do, uh, not a really funny thing to do, and it, it grew up to one terabyte within several days. Uh, then we had to uh, use a very, very quickly flow copy and go. we, we had to uh, stop using triggers. Why? First, we had a reference DB and everything was beautiful, but we had to eradicate it because from the point of view of the structure that is covered with external keys, Postgres goes to those tables and asks, this record with this ID, uh, can you put it through? In the majority of cases, we get the answer yes. So from the point of view of the system's effectiveness, well, it, it wasn't adequate to our tasks, so we sp were spending a lot of resources uh, to get the data from external keys. Then first we performed the aggregation in a simple way through triggers, and uh, it cost us a lot of resources, as we realized it later. So aggregation and hashing of queries was to be put through a collector. And uh, then we had to go away from reference structure and uh, have the following situation. For, for example, our log receives uh, the information about this uh, query, the corresponding transaction. The plan is as follows, the bug is as follows, the uh, error is as follows. We transpose that and uh, put a query to one place, uh, the plan to another place, and aggregate it mean to another place, yet another place. And uh, we, in this way, got copy flows that uh, were corresponding to each thing. So we had copy plan, copy query, copy error. We had a flow for all of the three or a pool of flows for everyone. And sometimes channels could not cope with this flows, so we had to put more channels. So what is it basically? This is, these are active copies that are closed, well, by default we we made them being closed every second in order to fix the data that were transmitted and finalize the transaction. Usually, it, uh, usually it's okay for us, uh, and if it's not, we just use the second table. And when we generated the data, as soon as we understand that we uh, meet a plan for a server, we send the plan to a server directly without any bufferization, buffering. Because our tests show that independently of the volume of back that we need to wait to buffer periodically, there is nothing better than send 
each uh, notion that uh, arises because it was uh, it was interfering with Postgres and the problems uh, were not only by the ones who wanted to write down something on the server but uh, also by the ones who wanted to read something from the server because the one comes with one megabyte the other comes with one megabyte and therefore we uh, buffered the loading uh, we could also adjust something in the operation system, uh, but the main thing in the framework. But uh, why do, do we need to solve uh, problems if we cannot create them? Why did we got rid from triggers? Because we started to make inserts through the copy, and we worked with the libraries. And there is no sense to store queries. Uh, if they are practically the same, with the same parameters. So we have the dynamic uh, uh, library for copy and paste, because the collector is smart, it can filter, uh, it can see that this query I already sent it and I don't need to send it for the second time. But after some time, collector forgets this information and it can send the query for the second time, although the query is in uh, the DLL. So for insert trigger was created for uh, these purposes. And we rewrote it, started from 9.5 to insert on conflict do nothing. What was the aftermath of use of uh, stream copy? When we got 100 servers, the load was 4,000 operation writing operations per second. We managed to decrease write ops four times. That means to one 1,000. Now we have 100 megabytes per second writing ops. That leads to 10 terabytes archive for three months. So it is uh, acceptable for every developer to find any problem during th that occurred during the last three months. So these are the numbers for us. But the case is that it's not enough to understand the problem, to collect the problem. So. That something that we were uh, that we are processing is millions of plans per 24 hours, and this is a trash. So the trash bin because it's not structured. What shall be done with these millions of plans? So we stand against the problems, and we started to think of uh, how to delineate uh, the plans, how to sort them out. It should be not the millions, but uh, some bits of these millions. So we pose questions of about what do we need to know about the query. So who did the query? Uh, what is the method of execution? What's the application? So uh, where does the adequacy start? The second question is where it started, where it is performed, what is the server, what is the basis or host. And the third question is how did the problem realize? What was the problem in the plan? To understand the owner of uh, every query, we could set the application name with the host or method. So every application comes to us and tells uh, I came from the certain server and this is my name. Yes, of course, we have the name limitation of 63 byte. So the length of server name and length uh, is cut in the system. Secondly, in uh, all of our servers, we have log line prefix that should be suitable for our system to provide the information that we are, that we want to have. You can uh, read the, about this in manual, but this is the first uh, line in log that we can see and analyze. 
uh, and uh, where we get the information about timestamps of when was the query originated, what was the method, what was the PIP process, what happened there. All the information with this log can be derived. So the system is flexible and it lets us configure logline prefix in every way depending on the possibilities uh, provided by Postgres. But if you don't use timestamp there, you will not get any information. Furthermore, we understand that okay, we've named every query, but still we need to separate queries from each other. And we understand that if we have two servers, two servers with different uh, operations, uh, it is impossible for us to derive uh, total statistics regarding the two ser from two servers. And if the load is stable throughout the day, you you would not like to see the correlation between today and yesterday. It's better to see what what is happening today. Like imagine some service came to your database and uh, everyone begins to perform calculations starting from the first a March or February. So we had the decision for host and uh, for day. And this is not regulated between uh, uh, two delineations. So we work with the f gate application or method so application that executed some operations and the note of the plan this is the stress scan, sex scan why do I say that we transferred to that we migrated to, to the gate we just cut down the objects for analysis and uh, you can see uh, on the picture that there were more than 1,000 of queries in the host, but we analyzed only eight of them. So the creation, delineation of patterns, patterns lets us to take a look uh, at timelines and to investigate the, to, uh, the overall patterns. Imagine you have one and the same pattern that takes place once an hour. So like your client comes to you once an hour or that it's executed once, that some query is executed once an hour. And you understand that you will need this query actually once in 24 hours. So we analyze the plans, the quantity of facts, uh, the total time. This refers to the model of query that ate the most of your process or resources. Then we can sort out and tell to someone that Vasya, this is your server that uh, eats too many resources. Then the quantity of resources. This is these are the buffers from disks or from memory. If you understand that you have a query that reads something from disk, that means that query should not read so much from disk or that you should suppress query for uh, it not to calculate analytics for one year, but uh, perhaps it should calculate analytics for uh, a certain period, less than one year. And timelines that I already mentioned, they let us clearly understand what what takes place in 24 hours every day. So this is the picture. We can sort out every column. We can uh, see all the frameworks and arrive at the conclusions. So by our, our own eyes, with our own eyes, we can see the the periods of execution the similar model on the first level 
is the method. So method and plan under the methods, or plan and method under the plan. It can happen that one and the same query uh, uses uh, one and the same method. It's the situation like, tell me who is the user with identificator 7 that, that visits me right now. After six months, I suppose, we understood that it's uneasy for us to live without analysis for nodes. So who did, who read the data? So we started to combine it, and it was actually the same. So who did it, when, and uh, what time? At what time did it happen? Then, in the next six months, we made a, a similar monitoring for the nodes, like common expression and so on. And afterwards, when we understood that we have all the information, we made the advisor tool. And the advisor tool advises some actions uh, f relating on the basis of some patterns, like the sor sorting. So actually, this is our interesting system. Thank you very much for your attention. Shall we have any questions? Feel free to ask them. Do you have any questions? You have shown the website. Explain SBs. Your website, explain SBs RU is not available right now. Where can I uh, see your system? It's not published for now. When will it be published? I cannot promise. Anything. Is this a commercial product? Is this a commercial product? No, this is our internal product. Can I apply this product on my facilities? We are not ready yet. The product is uh, developed for our own infrastructure. We need six more months to develop, uh, to develop it, and the priority is not so high for this product.